Hi, my name is Tammy and today's video is going to be covering creating your own barrier flux. You want to use a barrier flux when you know that you're going to apply a lot of heat to your piece. This will help reduce the amount of fire stain and fire scale that occurs on your pieces. Fire scale is just the oxidation that you see that occurs when you heat up the piece, kind of darkens, gets a little black. And that will often be removed by your pickle but fire stain goes much deeper than that, can, can kind of get embedded into that piece and it can potentially ruin a perfectly good piece. So you don't want to spend hours creating the most beautiful pendant or bracelet only to find out in your final stages of polishing that you have this ugly gray cast to your piece and it's usually not all over the piece, it's usually a section and it will show up like a sore thumb. So we want to prevent that from happening. And I found that the best way to do that is to apply a barrier flux before you do any soldering operations. A barrier flux doesn't replace your regular flux or your flow flux, like handy flux, but you want to apply this before you apply a flow flux. So it's really easy to make your own and we just have two ingredients that goes into this barrier flux. So the first ingredient that you're going to use is denatured alcohol and you can pick this up at any hardware store typically. Um, I think methyl spirits or something like that is, a, is another thing that you can use but I tend to use denatured alcohol. The other ingredient that you need is boric acid. So I got this boric acid from Rio Grande and um, it's not the same as borax. Uh, I get a lot of questions about which one do I use, borax or boric acid. All of the articles that I've read typically state that you should use boric acid. And boric acid is actually made from borax. but uh, I'm not sure there's some additional um, components to it, but this is what I've been told to use. This is what I use. I'm also going to provide a link to an article that was put out there by Mark Nelson with Rio Grande, and it actually goes through the steps that I'm going to be covering here today. So it's very easy to mix up. There's no particular formula for this or no ingredient, no measurements per se, but you want to use a glass container to store your flux in and something that has a tight fitting lid. So I like these ball jars or mason jars that has a um, sealed lid and over time uh, you'll notice your top gets crusty and stuff like that, but you just clean that off, add a little more denatured alcohol as you need to because it can evaporate away, and just keep going. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to pour out some denatured alcohol into our glass container. Let's get this open. And uh, you have to be careful when you're pouring this stuff because it can definitely go all over the place. Let's see if I can actually pour it without making a huge mess. So, Alright, so I poured some in the glass container and I did spill a little, so let's clean that up. I don't think I've ever poured this stuff and not made a mess. Wasn't too bad this time. Alright, so let's close this up and get it out of our way. And then we want to add our boric acid. And this comes in a powder form. I think you can get some in crystal form, but you don't want that 
you want the finest powder that you can buy. And this is very, very powdery. So let me just go run and go get something to scoop it out with. Um, I just went and got a simple measuring cup and I'm just going to scoop out some of this powder and then pour it into my jar. And what you want to do is you want to try and get about a 50-50 um, concentration of this. So about 50%. You can go a little less, a little more. I'm just going to put a little more in here. And you'll see that the boric acid will actually settle to the bottom of this. And it will always be separated. You'll have to stir it before you use it each time. Not a big deal, but don't expect it to just dissolve into the solution. Alright, so you have about a 50-50 mix here and so what I do before I use it is I typically use something like a wooden stick and just stir it really well and then I can simply dip my piece into this solution and you can either let it dry and um, it gets this kind of crusty film on your piece or you can actually light it um, on fire it makes a really really pretty green flame so that's kind of like kind of what I like to do but there's others that recommend that you just let it dry naturally if you have the time to do so and that that actually results in a thicker better coating um, I've tried it both ways I don't see a ton of difference between the two but uh, whatever your preference is is what you should do so I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like when you actually light that piece on fire and let that denatured alcohol just kind of burn away and it'll, you know, the, um, the little film that it will leave you. I just have a sample piece of silver that I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would flux this with a barrier flux and then light it on fire so you can see the pretty green flame. I have my flux that we made up earlier and you can see it's it's already separated. So I will stir this. Really well. And you simply just dip your piece in, stir it around, get it coated. Kind of let it drip off into the container. And then I'm going to set my container aside because it is very flammable and I don't want it, I don't want the container to catch on fire. So I just have my little butane torch light it up and burn that off and that was really quick but you see you're left with a film on there and that helps to prevent the fire stain and fire scale now with this if you are doing a soldering operation and you need to use flux to make that solder flow, that is a different flux. You will still want to use your handy flux or whatever flow flux that you're using and you would apply that over the barrier flux. So I've made up my solution and when I'm done using it I simply just close it up, tighten that lid down. If you don't all of that denatured alcohol will simply just evaporate away and leave you with just the boric acid and then you'll wind up having to add more denatured alcohol. So I just want to show you one that I have already going. Um, it's a bigger bigger jar of it and you can kind of see it'll get kind of crusty at the top when you open it 
it makes a mess. So what I like to do is I kind of keep it in a little plastic container so that when I open it, all those little flakes that come off the top kind of drop into the container. And you can see my wooden stick gets crusty with it too. But you can you can just clean off, you know, once you have it open, just clean off the extra crud that's around it. And you can see that I have a lot more boric acid in this one than denatured alcohol. Uh, all I need to do is just add some more denatured alcohol the next time that I use it. And you'll find that you'll have to do that over time. So make sure you're putting a barrier flux on your pieces when you know that you're going to be heating them for some time. And that should help you uh, maybe not eliminate, but um, greatly reduce any fire stain and fire scale that you get. So good luck and I hope this tip helps.